Yellowstone's prequel 1883 is rising to success, breaking records and satisfying fans' desires for more Western drama. But how did it all get started? Which celebrity couple stars in the show? Can you watch it without seeing Yellowstone first? Keep watching to find out. The Yellowstone four-season premiere Half the Money gave viewers a tantalizing glimpse into the history of the Dutton family and the Yellowstone Ranch. An extended flashback saw John Dutton's great-great-grandfather James Dutton along with two sons. The ancestral Duttons encounter a group of Native Americans who are seeking to bury their own ancestor on the Dutton Ranch that was once their home. Unexpectedly, the elder Dutton accepts their request and even offers them a calf to help them get through the rough winter. It's an intriguing insight into the beginnings of the Dutton family and gives backstory to some important Yellowstone moments. Notably, John Dutton, played by Kevin Costner, has spoken of his family's six generations on the ranch and how they had vowed to never let it go. Paramount and Taylor Sheridan took that flashback and expanded it to create 1883, the origin story of Yellowstone. The new series introduces James Dutton again, this time 10 years before the scene we witnessed in Half the Money. Here, James has a daughter and just one son, with the other yet to be born, and we see them beginning the long journey north to what will eventually become their home in Montana. It remains to be seen if we will see more direct connections to Yellowstone beyond the early Dutton pioneers. However, given the history of the region we've heard from the likes of John Dutton and Chief Rainwater on that series, it's hard to believe we won't. We've already seen some moments in 1883 that mirror, parallel, and give added context to what we've seen on Yellowstone, and we suspect that will continue. Speaking to Deadline, actor Tim McGraw said it was the flashback scenes shot for Yellowstone that got the ball rolling on the spinoff. After shooting the scenes, he received a call from series creator Taylor Sheridan, who suggested the studio wanted a prequel. But Sheridan wasn't given a long lead time. On the contrary, Sheridan says the studio was so impressed by the flashback to James Dutton that they wanted the new series off the ground and airing by the end of 2021. They fast-tracked the series so it could debut not long after the relaunch of the studio's streaming service, now rebranded as Paramount Plus. Sheridan told Deadline, The studio read it April 12th and I was flying out May 2nd to go film another TV show in another country. Viacom CBS executive Keys Hill Edgar calls and says, We can hang our hat on this, launch our streaming service with it. I say, that's great. He says, we need it this year. I said, Keys, that's not possible. I can start production in February, maybe. He said, no, Taylor, we need it to air this year. Sheridan wasn't happy about the way the studio was rushing production and pushed back, saying he needed more time. It was impossible to have something air in seven months that wasn't cast with no locations and no other scripts. To make it happen, Sheridan made demands of his own, saying, I need the toys, I need the cast, I need the team, and I did not hear the word no at all. The two central characters at the start of 1883 are widower Captain Shea Brennan and the dedicated Pinkerton agent Thomas. They are the two men who were hired by a group of German settlers to help them travel north to find a new home. But by the end of the opener, we meet the two real stars of the series, the ancestors of Yellowstone protagonist John Dutton. Delivering a pair of powerful performances, you'd think the leads were Hollywood veterans. However, those in the know recognize them as country music stars and husband and wife team of Tim McGraw and Faith Hill. While actor Sam Elliott as Brennan brings the veteran acting leadership to the cast, McGraw and Hill bring a crossover celebrity to the series, as both have individually become icons in the music world. Though both have dabbled in front of the camera with bit parts here and there, 1883 marks the first time each will star in a leading role. In an interview with Us Magazine, Hill spoke about what drew them to the series, comparing the decision to their musical careers, saying, If the song is right, then you don't give it a second thought, because writing is a real craft that should be respected. We read the material and we were like, how can we not do it? According to Hill's husband, Tim McGraw, the married couple was always a package deal. Their latest album, 2017's The Rest of Our Life, was their first joint musical effort, and 1883 is the first time they team up on the screen. I'm gonna build you a house so big you get lost in it. Yeah. More than just a spin-off of a hit network drama, 1883 is a sprawling Western epic that stands on its own. The connections to its parent series Yellowstone are definitely there, and fans of both series will be enriched by watching them side by side. Even still, 1883 is more than anything a self-contained series about a family of pioneers looking to make a new life for themselves on the American frontier. Though centered on the post-Civil War ancestors of the Yellowstone family, the series also stars Hollywood legend Sam Elliott as Shea Brennan, a man with no connection to the prior series, at least none that we've seen thus far. To his credit, series creator Taylor Sheridan has crafted an origin story for his prior series that requires no knowledge of Yellowstone. It can be enjoyed all on its own as a new period western. 
Set more than 100 years before Yellowstone, there's enough of a time gap that we won't be seeing any familiar faces. The world of 1883 is a very different one, too, with a lawless land of outlaws and gunslingers. Although tonally these elements may recall shades of the neo-western Yellowstone, they offer up very different opportunities for drama. The political landscape is also a stark contrast to Yellowstone, with the West largely unexplored and no corporations or big business interests looking to seize land from the Duttons just yet. Indeed, 1883 has proven to be a very different series, more somber western than family drama. That said, it's hard to deny that watching both series won't help weave a richer tapestry. Production on the elaborate period western wasn't an easy one, and everyone knew it going in. Actress Faith Hill told the New York Times, Once we committed to the show, we spent a lot of time speaking to Taylor Sheridan, and he was adamant about this fact. This is going to be really, really hard. We're not afraid of hard work, but wow, he was not joking. It was a challenging five-month shoot that was still ongoing when the third episode premiered on Christmas Day. The production headed to Texas and Montana for much of the filming, which took place mostly outdoors and forced the cast to endure harsh conditions, brutal winds, and long hours. In August, they had to contend with a 100-degree heat wave, while in Montana it was a single-digit freeze. Despite the rough conditions, series lead Tim McGraw had no regrets, telling Entertainment Weekly, It's super dusty and super hot. There's no way around it. At the same time, it's like every kid's fantasy to do something like this. Put your chaps on, your cowboy hat, and your gun holsters every day. And you get on a horse and try to survive this journey. We warned you. Actor LaMonica Garrett, who plays Pinkerton agent Thomas, told Deadline about the difficult situations they were in while filming, saying, There's a reason they don't try things like this that often and why Lonesome Dove was one of the last ones. It's difficult. You're traveling with all these wagons, these weather conditions, the wind, the river crossing, the horses. But all seems to have gone smoothly for the cast and crew, with Sheridan saying, Fortunately, no one got hurt, but it was a pretty dicey deal. Its parent series Yellowstone has been a big hit, and the first spin-off 1883 was one of the most highly anticipated streaming dramas of the year. Now, the numbers for Paramount Plus can back up lofty claims made about the spin-off. 1883 launched on the streaming service on Sunday, December 19, 2021, with the first two episodes releasing the same day. The Yellowstone sequel blew away all previous debuts for the service, setting a new record for a Paramount Plus original series premiere. According to a press release, 1883 proved to be the most watched debut for a new original, and more than doubled the previous record holder in terms of viewership across the service's platforms. The series premiere was also broadcast following the week's new episode of Yellowstone as a standard network broadcast and drew an additional 4.9 million estimated viewers. Paramount's parent company Viacom CBS was clearly pleased with the launch, too. Tanya Giles, Viacom CBS streaming programming chief, shared, The results of 1883's debut are truly phenomenal. The day one streaming numbers, coupled with the results of the linear sampling effort and social response from our audience, show the tremendous promise for the series. We look forward to continuing on this epic journey with our subscribers. With Yellowstone proving a big hit and 1883 off to a fast start, it seems Taylor Sheridan's Western expansion may prove to be his own manifest destiny. Well, I guess we're about to find out, ain't we? Sam Elliott has had roles in old classics like Virgil Earp in the 90s Western crime drama Tombstone and the lead in The Quick and the Dead. So why would a big-screen gunslinger like Elliot want to strap on the holster for a TV series? Talking to Deadline, the actor had a pretty straightforward answer, telling them it was, quote, Taylor's script. Series creator Taylor Sheridan had made a name for himself in Hollywood with some of the best thrillers in recent years. Elliot was well aware of his reputation in front of and behind the camera. He said, I knew his work as an actor, and because of his films, the guy writes brilliant stuff. I love his dialogue. When initially approached, Elliot wasn't without some concerns, mainly of his continued typecasting in westerns, saying, You gotta be careful, I guess, how many westerns you do, or they're going to think that's all you can do. Still, Elliot was able to overcome that concern thanks to Sheridan, and the sterling script he received more than won him over. He told the New York Times in another interview, His writing is very spare. That's a joy to work with. When you have dialogue that sounds like people talk, it's a lot of fun to do it. So far, Elliot has been impressed with the finished product, telling Esquire magazine that the end result has been something special. He shared, I've never seen one that has looked anything like this on television for sure. It looks like a motion picture on the big screen. Filming on location was important to Taylor Sheridan to preserve the realism of the visuals on screen. He told Deadline, We're not in studios. It's not five wagons that, you know, they CGI into 25. They're traveling with us. For Sheridan, authenticity was key to the production. Veteran costume designer Janie Bryant talked to The Hollywood Reporter about her experiences and how they made the cast believably dirty, worn, and tired to look their parts. 
Bryant has worked on several period dramas, including Mad Men and Deadwood, and those programs were both good practice for her experiences in 1883. She added, The actresses are all in corsets, riding horses or driving wagons, and the men are all in wool with the heat and the elements, and you can really feel how taxing it was. Think about 100-degree weather and wearing a camisole, corset, bloomers, bustle pad, petticoat, and then putting a costume on top of that. I applaud them for going with it. Even the way they produce the show harkens back to days gone by. Sheridan told Deadline, Everywhere we go, we exhaust all the resources of whatever town we're in. We have like 400 cast and crew. We're living on a ranch, no cable, no cell service, no Wi-Fi. Speaking to The Hollywood Reporter, actor Tim McGraw praised Sheridan's dedication to the look and feel of the series. Taylor is a stickler for authenticity, even to the way you ride, down to the set design and the costume. For Sheridan, if it wasn't a believable world for the actors, it wouldn't be for the audience either. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.